Let's just talk a little bit about selection. The first part of this uh, summary, excuse me, the first part of this outline was selecting things. So the way you select something in 3ds Max is you just click on it. Boom. Well, it made a liar out of me. I hit Q. Here's your selection icon right here. You see that? Or the letter Q will do that. You click on something. Well, it doesn't like what I've done. What it wants me to do is actually wants me to get off of this polygon right here. So I clicked on that to get off that polygon because it was selected. Now when I select something, that's how you select something in 3ds Max. You just click on it, okay? If you're editing something, then you actually need to edit, exit that editing. It's not letting me do that because it's telling me, hey, listen, you're about to click on something and mess up what you've already done. Get off of it and now officially get on it. So now I can click on that. Now if I want to select two things, what do I do? I just hit the control key and I can select the other thing. So if I hit my W key, then I can move all those things together. Now, if I want to get rid of one selection, I just hit the control key again and click on it, or the alt key and click on it, and it gets rid of that. So you can multiple select. Now, I want to make some ice. Anybody have any idea how many ice cubes I want to make? Four. Four. Good. Great. <laughs> Good. So I'm going to click up here, and this little button here is create. And I'm going to hit the create button and pull out a box. And anywhere on the stage, I'm just going to draw a little box, like a little ice cube. And I like the color. It's blue already. I didn't plan that. It just happened. All right? And now I want to make a copy. And so the huge uh, secret of making a copy, the same as Second Life, is what shift drag, right? So I'm going to come along here and hold the shift key down, but I have to have the W key. That's my translation. Remember that? So I'm going to hold shift key down and move that. And now 3 ds Max is going to do something very nice for me. It's going to bring up this box. And it's going to say, do you want a copy, an instance, or a reference? And how many do you want? So I could repeat 30 in a row. So if I'm make, making a picket fence, for example, I could put one, shift it and put 100 and it make a picket fence 100 long. Okay. So you see this is a beautiful, very easy uh, package to draw in. So let me tell you what a copy is. A copy is a totally disassociated. Okay. It's disassociated. I mean, it, 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 you can do anything to it. It won't influence what it came from. An instance, however, is associated. If I do something to the original, it will change the instance. Or if you do something to the instance, okay, it'll change the original. It's kind of like being married, all right? Now, a reference is like, once you make it, if I do something to it, then the reference will change because it came from me. But if reference does something, it won't do anything back to me. All right, that's pretty cool, right? We all want laws like that. So let's come along here and put four and hit OK, and boom, I made five. So it's, I said four, it made four copies. So there you go, all in a row. Now, I don't like that, so I want to rotate those and move them around. So there's another two gizmo, and that's the rotation gizmo. And if you hit the E key, you get your rotation gizmo. You see that? And so with the rotation, and what I'm going to do is come along here, and I'm Control-P, so I can kind of pan over here, so I can bring this to the center. Let's hit Alt-Z to zoom in. There you go, and we're going to work on that ice just a little bit. So uh, rotation gizmo is the E key. And I'll tell you, learn these uh, shortcuts. I'm going to rotate a little bit. Click on the next one, and I can just kind of you know, miss them or mess them around a little bit. And just rotate there. I'm going to put my ice in there. Rotate around there, you know, just moving around. Right anyway, well, I don't really want them all the same size either, right? So I want to use, uh, and look at here, when I get in the center of this, I can actually rotate two things at once. Just like the, uh, just the I'm selecting both axes at the same time. So I want to shrink one or two. So let's click on this one and shrink it. So the shrink command is R. And so I can go by one axis. I, yeah, I can shrink the, the Y axis or the X axis. Here's these little, see how these highlight it? That means I can swing, swing two axes at the same time. Or if I go toward the center, which I often do, I want to just make some bigger or smaller. I can shrink the whole thing. So it allows you to select double axis, single axis, or all three axes at the same time as far as shrinking and stretching. Really great tool, let me tell you. So now that I, I like that, I'm just going to kind of move them around and stack them on each other so they're, they're hanging around. And I want to spend a lot of time here because we've, so I hit the Q key back to select. I'll click on one of these. I'll hit the W key and I'm just going to kind of move this around a little bit. Okay, bring my ice in. And you can see you can spend your whole life doing this. There's no doubt. And what I want to do now is I want to group all these together. So I want to select these. And there's a number of ways to select items. I already showed you the control click. If I, I could do that with every one, I could control click, control click. But I don't want to do that. I want to select them all at once. So the easy way to do that is just marquee around them, just like that. Okay? 
And uh, there's different types of marquee. You can see there's a whole series here. I often just use the square marquee, but there's instances where people need to draw around objects or whatever. There's also marquee just by selecting a partial or a whole. And we'll, I just wanted to show that to you. I like the partial, so if I just marquee align on something, I got that piece. Okay, so I go back marquee around the whole thing. I want to group that, so we just go to group. And we hit group. Ta-da! And I'm going to give it a name. And I'm going to call it um, ice. Now, the one thing I haven't done a very good job of is naming my objects. So I want to make sure they're all named well. So if I click on that, let's go to show you how to name an object real quick. So I'll hit Z that, to, or Control Z to bring everything back to, to where it was. There we go. Whoa. My ice is really back there. Let's move it closer to our place. Now, now that everything's grouped, then it all moves together. Okay. And I got a lot of the ice is pretty big there. So we have lots of ice in our cup. Now, since it's all grouped together, I could hit the, w, the R key since it's too big and shrink it all together too as well. So that's very useful. And uh, now that it's all kind of getting closer together, let me hit W, bring us over here. Sorry. Cool. I want to put everything in the cup. But I want to make sure everything's named. So I'm going to hit Q to get into my selection. Here's my cup. And right down here, you see it says cone 1. I don't want it. That. I want it to call it cup. Thank you. And see how this says what? Straw? No, it says tube. I want to call it something I recognize, so let's call it straw. And I would suggest that you do name things so you can recognize them. And I have, I'm the biggest sinner for not doing that. It's called ice. That's good. All right. Now, how do I get to see that? Well, there's a control. There's just an H key. If you hit the H key, you should be able to see your names. And that may be a command in. There it is. So I hit the H key, and you can see here's the name. Here's my straw. Here's my cup. And here's my ice, which has box one, two, three, and four in it, or five in it. So that's cool. So if I click on that and hit OK, then I actually selected the straw. So I can select an item by going to where it's by its name. Now, you may think that's no big deal. Just click on the screen. But if you like working with a very complex screen where maybe you have a 1,000 items, then you're going to use this naming quite a bit. OK? Hopefully. You won't waste your life doing that. <laughs> but a lot of people, you know, they do very well in that business. So I want to get in here. I want to get the straw in the cup. I want to get the ice in the cup. And then we're done with this demonstration. And we'll move on to the next one. So let me kind of get closer. Let me hit Control P so I can pan over here. And Alt Z so I can zoom in. There you go. And I'm just going to make it really simple and fast so we can just move on to the next example. So Q to get select, uh, select my group. Hit W, just kind of move things around. And boy, I may have to shrink that a little bit. What do you think? Am I going to get it in there? Wah, not quite. So I'm going to go ahead and uh, hit the R key and shrink it. Uh, and I'm going to actually control arc rotate so I can just look down inside and see what's, oh, let's see what's happening. There you go. And then uh, let me bring my straw over there. Uh, OK. And just. Hit the W key and bring your straw over. There you go. And let me see if I can take a look at the top here. There you go. Control P. And over. All right. Now, I'm going to go ahead and just uh, select all this and just rotate it and group it and rotate it. So let's see, take a better look at it. So I'm going to hit the Q key. going to marquee around everything. I'm going to make a group out of that. And I'm going to go, OK, um, group. And I'll just call it a cup and all. And hit OK. And I can look at my rotate key if I want to hit uh, rotate here and say, oh, there's the ice. And, and one thing you're looking at is, it looks like to me that I'd like to move the ice, but everything's grouped. So how do you do that? How do you work with objects that are grouped? So I, now I have a group within a group. So what I can do is go to group. Click on that. Oh, didn't like what I did. Select an object. Go to group and, and open. And when I do that, it allows me to go in there and work with the different items that are in there. So I'll hit the W key so I can translate that. And now I can move my ice around. And then I can move that back straw where it needs to go. And then I can go back to uh, close. And I kind of want to rotate this around again. 
And then I can hit Shift Q to render. And that's what it looks like. Well, not very attractive. So you can see how someone can just spend their whole life working on just a cup. All right. So that was the first demonstration. The next thing we're going to do is draw a telescope. And that should go a little faster, but uh, that's kind of the first introduction to the basics of 3ds Max.